We bless God for another day as we've been given the opportunity to live another day. That means there are different possibilities. God has much more for our life. If he has given us another day, that means his mercies are new today, every morning. And so we are waking to the fact that as long as we live, there are deep, diverse divine opportunities that is open to us as we engage, as we move out and begin to utilize the spiritual principles of God's word and to implement those strategies and be obedient to his word as we walk closely in intimate relationship, in step with him, all things are possible. Before we even get into the word of God for our devotion today, I want us to just take a moment, just acknowledge the Lord, lift up your voice and begin to praise him for another day, magnify him. The Bible says that we should hallow his name. As you do that, you invoke his presence where you are, you change the atmosphere. The Bible says he happens the praises of his people. You step into that realm as you begin to praise God and acknowledge your heavenly Father. The Bible says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his cause with praise. So lift up your voice and then begin to bless him. Father, we thank you. We honor that name and we magnify you. We adore you. We lift you up and we acknowledge that you are the God of creation, our loving Father in heaven. We thank you because with you all things are possible. And as we call up, if we call your mighty name, we know you will answer according to your promise and say, here you are. So we call you our Father. We call you our God. We call you the God that answers prayer. As we call you in the name of Jesus, let your very presence manifest, oh God. We need you. We bless you for such a privilege. To come before and I want you to open your mouth right now and ask God for his kingdom. Because the Bible says, accept that his kingdom come and his will be done here on earth. So open your mouth and say, Father, I thank you for the privilege, for the heritage that I have in you to be able to ask and receive your kingdom. And so, Father, by faith, I ask you for your kingdom. Let your spirit take over my life. I submit myself to it and I command my whole body to be yielded, open up and let the Holy Spirit take absolute control over my life. And I thank you. And I become open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord for you receiving the kingdom as you begin to sense the very presence of God. We thank you and we bless you and we give you glory and honor and adoration. Even as we spend time in your presence in this time of devotion, Enlighten our eyes, open our eyes to behold wonders things in your word. Let us have an encounter with the truth, not just be stimulated with by information. We pray that we step into the light for the entrance of your word. It give a light. We pray for an awakening that will revolutionize our life for, for encounter, for demonstrating power of your Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory and adoration. In the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. The Bible says, What can we say to these things? If God be for us, what can be against us? What can we say to all these things? If God be for us, who then can be against us? Paul is reiterating, narrating the goodness of the Lord, overwhelmed by the grace, the incredible grace that God has bestowed upon his people. Begin to talk about how God has called us, justified us, glorified us. He began to make his readers aware that of the tremendous promises of God, the privilege of being connected to God, the position that we have attained because of our intimate relation, relation our relationship with God, the, the place of rulership and influence and dominion. We have come to a place of liberty. All these things are in the word. And Paul, knowing this, began to state it, list it, describe it to the readers. 
And then whilst he has finished doing that, he makes an incredible declaration. What can we say to all these things? Because in when you, he sums up everything that he has listed. He makes a confirmation. If God be for us, who then can be against us? So Paul is making us aware that God is for us. That no matter the circumstances, situation you are situation you are going through, He is not against you. God is for you. Sometimes you might think that you are going into the primitive process of God. That God is dealing with you because He doesn't like you. That He's punishing you because of your sins. No, the reason why sometimes you go through such uh, incredible disadvantages and you are going through some experiences is because you yourself are separating yourself from God by you living in sin and God cannot force you to be able to embrace his blessing but as far as God is concerned he's not against you he is for you he has done everything possible to make sure that you experience his benevolence and begin to step into a grace that you are not worth it Paul is saying if God be for you the who then can be against you. As you have woken up this morning, there are things that is listed against you, things that opposes your progress, limits your ability and obstructs the opportunity for greatness. There are things that is against you, but Paul is making us aware that if God is for you, if it's be for you, if the presence of God is what is for you, then everything that is against you is nullified. So the total summation of everything that is against you cannot be compared to the presence of God. You have to be aware of this. And sometimes you begin to elevate and magnify things that is against you, although you have God in your life and you have not come to the understanding that God came into your life to be the restraint to be the one to stop the enemy, to vanquish your life and, and to take over your destiny and to be able to oppress you. This morning I need you to understand. If only you have a revelation of that, God is for you. Don't let anything come into your heart. Don't embrace the lies of darkness. Don't entertain what the enemy has misinterpreted and misrepresented about God and telling you that because God is not intervening, God is not miraculously uh, doing things for you, propelling you to a supernatural experience and giving you an advantage, that means God is against you. No, you have not come to the understand. If you begin to understand the love of God for your life this morning, that you have no reason to point the finger, to blame and to be offended with the process of God. So Paul is saying, what can we say to these things? There are some things you must know. And when you come to the awareness of these things, the only summation, conclusion, the thing, the right reaction is to say something. Because some of you, you don't know about these things, so you are not saying it. Some of you also know it, but you don't say it. But you have to understand the reason why God makes you aware of these things is not just for you to have the knowledge of it, but for you to declare it. So when you know that God is for you, in the beginning, it might look like circumstances and situation does not match up with the promise. But if you can open your mouth and say, no matter the opposition, God is for me. And so today, as you are confronted with opposition, as you are literally obstructed with limitations, our things are listed and contending against your progress, you need to just lift up your faith and declare God is for me. Now, when you are sick, you have to say, God is for me, I am healed. When you are going to deficiency, you say, God provides for me because he is for me. And so Paul is saying that if you know all these things, what are you going to say? So that I've come to challenge you and to awaken you to the fact the knowledge of the promises of God does not automatically translate into an experience in your life until you understand that you have to declare what you know for you to possess it. Until you decree a thing, it shall never be established. It is your duty to know what God has said. But for you to experience it, you have to put it in your mouth and confess your faith, act 
activate it and propel it into manifestation. You call those things that be not as if they are because many of us, we know the Bible, we know the promises of God, but we don't say nothing about it. What has God done about? What has God promised you about healing? What has God said about your deliverance? What has God said about your progress? Yeah, the reason why you have promises and you have ordered them, but you're not coming to the manifestation of these promises. Why? Because you yourself are not declaring it. How many preaching messages do you have and you have not said nothing about it? The Bible says, Paul questions us and asks us, what are we going to say about the things that God has already done? Then it makes a declaration. If God be for us, who can be against us? I don't care their numbers. I don't care their origin. I don't care what they call themselves. Whether they be, they be principalities or powers or wicked spirit. If it God is for you, the omnipotent God, the creator of the universe, if it is for you, then who then can be against you? So God can be for you and his presence can be with you. But if you are not saying nothing, then you literally succumb to the opposition that those things that is against you now overpower you, oppress you, and put limitation in you because it is not enough for you to know it. It is right. God literally gives you revelation so that you can speak it out of your mouth. The promises of God you know is not automatically going to translate to an experience you can enjoy until you put it in your mouth and you declare it. So today I have to ask you the simple question that Paul is also stated in the text. What are you going to say about this text? The Bible says he has given us exceeding great promises that by these promises we shall be partakers of the divine nature. God wants you to be like him. And how does God operate? God put his word in his mouth and he said, let there be light. And he speaks to those things that be not and it is created. Today, as you are moving out, I need you to understand this morning, God has already done everything. His presence is with you. What are you going to say about these things? What are you saying about your marriage? What are you saying about your children? What are you saying about your father? What are you going to say about the things that God has already done through his son, Jesus Christ? What are you going to say about these things? Today, I join the spirit. I join the host of angels. And we all declare, if God be for us, that there is no competition. Nothing can stop us. A thousand shall fall on our left, ten thousand on our right. It shall not come near our dwelling. Only with our eyes shall we behold the reward of the wicked. It is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I, I also pray and I also decree that I, I enter into the secret place of the Most High God and I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I say of Him, is my refuge. My fortress, in whom do I trust? I need you to understand that God is for us. And if his presence is with you and you know he's there, open your mouth right now and begin to decree what you don't have. Begin to decree what you want to see. You are not stepping out this morning without establishing the fact that God is with you and you are going to vanquish every opposition, nullify their strategy, make sure that you make sure their weapons will not prosper against you. Why? Because God is for you. Lift up your voice and begin to praise God. And Father, we bless you. And we give you the glory and honor and adoration for you are with us. We will not die. We will live and declare the works of God. Today, the angels of God are moving forward, removing every obstacle, hindrance, and impediment. Oh, Father, we bless your name because you have done it. We lift up your God. We have your mighty name because you are God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are for me and you are not against me. And because of that, I succeed in everything I put my hands to do. I will be being blessed, being enriched. God bless you until next time.